Okay, so let's see if you can solve this basic algebraic equation without the aid of a calculator. And the equation is 3n minus 1 half is equal to 1 half. We want to solve for n. Again, we do not want to use our calculators. And uh, don't feel bad if you don't know how to solve this equation because, yes, it might be basic to me or basic algebra, but maybe you never learned algebra or maybe the last time you saw algebra was many years ago. But uh, anyways, see if you can still figure this out, you know, kind of mess around with it, play, play around with it. And if you can solve this equation, again, without using a calculator, put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this basic algebraic equation. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 3n minus 1 half is equal to 1 half. The object here is to figure out what n is equal to. So n is going to be equal to some number. That number, that value is called the solution to this equation. So what happens is when we have this number, if I replace this n with the actual solution, I'll go three times that mystery number minus one half. This value will end up being the same as this value, i.e. one half. That's how you check a solution or if you have the correct solution to an equation. But that's kind of a separate little topic. But let's go ahead and see the answer to this equation. So 3n minus 1 half is equal to 1 half. What's n equal to? Well, here it is. n is equal to 1 third. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that's very good. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face. An A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you still are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic linear equations with fractions. Now, if you tell your friends and family that, they'll be like, oh my goodness, that is so boring. Why do you like math? Can't you just watch something on Netflix instead? But anyways, all jokes inside, you should still feel very good about your ability to solve this equation. Now, if you happen to be an algebra student, this particular equation is quite easy. And in algebra, there is a lot to know. Matter of fact, let me just race this real quick before we get into the actual steps. So I can't teach you everything about solving equations in this uh, video, uh, but basically here's the thing. First of all, you need to have kind of the uh, prerequisite skills uh, before you get into algebra. In other words, you need to understand the order of operations, how to work with fractions, how to work with positive and negative numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you get into algebra, okay, you got to learn how to work with variables, et cetera, et cetera. And then it, in terms of the type of equations, well, there's a ton of different type of equations. Uh, you, uh, there's basically uh, the first easy type of equations you'll learn how to solve are called linear equations. And then you move on to all different types of equations, systems of equations, quadratic equations, rational equations, radical equations. I can go on and on and on. And each of these different type of equations requires different techniques and methods. Okay, so it's, it's there's just not one lesson on how to solve algebraic equations, but there are some kind of golden rules of solving algebra equations. Let me just re uh, review these real quick right now, and then we'll get into the actual solution for this problem. So let's take a simple equation like x is equal to 5. So you might be saying, that's not even a problem, Mr. You 2 math man. Uh, the, you know, there's nothing to do here, and you would be all right, but this is still an equation. It is a mathematical statement with an equal sign, okay? So what we want to do is always think of an equation as a uh, kind of like a balance scale, right? Or a teeter-totter or seesaw. You remember those things in the playgrounds? Uh, I remember all that stuff way back in the 1970s. That's when recess was really fun, when you would come back with a whole bunch of bruises and whatnot. But anyways, uh, I digress. So again, think of an equation as a balance scale. So if this was like um, weight, if you will, pounds, uh, five pounds on the right, and X would also be five pounds, right? X is equal to five pounds. So it's like a scale that has five pounds here and five pounds here. Now, for those of you that know physics, we're not talking about five pounds over here, and leverage and everything else like that. Let's just keep this nice and simple. So this is in, in balance. All right, now what happens if I add one to this side of the equation? Okay, well, now if this was five and this was five, but now I added one, 
well, this side is going to become heavier, right? It's going to kind of tilt this way. So that's a problem, okay? Now, uh, in terms of, of solving algebraic equations, I just added one over here to the right. Am I allowed to do that? Well, no, okay? Not just alone on one side, but if I add one over here, I'm okay, okay? Because basically, now this is six, and this was five plus one. This is also six, so I kind of balance it out. So here is the golden rule of algebra. You could do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do the exact same thing to, to both sides, okay? That is a key, key concept. And in general, what we want to do is get all of our variable terms to the left and all of our number terms to the right. Okay, so just some quick basic things before we get into the actual solution here. And uh, I'm going to walk through this. If you need help with linear equations, I'll give you some specific suggestions here in a second. But uh, first things first, uh, let's go ahead and just cover how to solve this basic uh, algebraic equation. So we have 3n minus 1 half is equal to 1 half. Okay, so I want to keep all my variable terms to the left, and I want to get all my numbers to the right. I have this negative 1 half over here. I'm like, ah, I want to get this over to the other side. So how can I get rid of this negative 1 half on the left-hand side? Easy. I can add a positive 1 half to it. Right, so negative 1 half plus a positive 1 half basically makes this 1 half disappear from this side of the equation. But remember the golden rule of algebra. If I decide uh, to add a 1 half over here, i got to do the same thing to the other side. Remember, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you got to do equally on the other. And that could be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Okay, so now we just add down in a column manner 3n plus nothing is 3n. Negative 1 half plus 1 half is zero, I don't need to write that. And one half plus one half is what? Well, we'll figure that out, but hopefully the answer is obvious. One half plus one half is one. Okay, so now we have three n is equal to one. How can we solve for n? Well, this is multiplication right here. So anytime you have a number next to a variable, that means three times that variable. So three times n. So how can I get n? That's what I want. I have three n or n, but that's 1n, okay? So we don't write uh, 1n. You know, typically, that's not the way we write things in algebra. We write as like n or x, but there really is a 1 in front of it. I like to have a 1 right there, so I have a 3. How can I get rid of 3? Well, we can divide both sides of the equation by 3, because 3 divided by 3 gives me that 1. But again, if I'm going to divide 3 on this side, i got to divide 3 on this side of the equation as well. So we get n is equal to 1 third. And that is the solution. Okay, now, if this little video was in some way entertaining or enjoyable or helpful or educational, hit that subscribe button. I definitely need your support. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit my notification or hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, I've been on YouTube for a long time. I love teaching mathematics, but uh, my YouTube videos are kind of informal instruction. I, take, I like to take problems nice and slow, but really, if you want to learn this stuff, uh, a couple of quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on all different types of topics, uh, mathematics, so you can kind of scour through that uh, for some help. But if you want my best instruction, check out one of these three courses, okay, for those of you who are at this level of math. The first is my Math Foundations course. That's a basic, quick course on uh, foundational mathematics to include uh, place value, fractions, percent, order of operations, positive and negative numbers, because if you don't have the foundations down, you're going to have a tough time learning algebra. But let's suppose you want to cover this, but you're not, you know, just satisfied with learning basic math. You want to get into some algebra as well. Then check out my math skills rebuilder course. In this course, I cover uh, basic math, but I also teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, uh, some trigonometry, some basic trigonometry, even some probability and statistics. All of my courses are self-paced, but these are two excellent courses for those of you that are not students. Now, if you happen to be a math student, uh, check out uh, for this particular level of math. You probably want to see my pre-algebra course, but you could see my Algebra 1 course. You'll see all those courses in, and the links to them in the description below, but hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.